This tutorial will cover connecting to a court reporter in real time. From an open case, all you have to do is click the button Connect to Real Time Feed. You'll notice down in the lower left, you get the Connect Reporter option box. Here I'm going to go ahead and type in the deponent's name or date or however you want to title the transcript. The COM port refers to the communication port on your computer. This is where it could get slightly tricky. If you have a built-in serial port and you're plugged directly into the court reporter through your built-in serial port, it's going to be COM1. If you have a USB adapter, that USB adapter could be assigned a virtual COM port that could be really anything from COM4 to COM11. It's a good idea to check your device manager to see what COM port the computer has assigned that adapter. To do that, click on the Start menu. From My Computer, right-click choose properties you'll then be in your system properties click on the hardware tab and then click on the device manager button please note that may be different depending on what version of Windows you have now I'm gonna go ahead and locate the ports category and I'm gonna expand it by cl clicking the plus box. Now I have a few ports here. The first one is my A10 USB to serial bridge. This is my USB to serial adapter. You can see the computer has assigned that COM6. I also have a built-in serial port on this computer which here is referred to as a communications port and that is COM1. You don't have to worry about the printer port. So I'm going to go ahead and close the device manager, close the system properties, and go back to Transcript Manager Pro. Now, from the COM port section, if I click the drop down, you'll notice that Transcript Manager Pro has automatically scanned your computer to determine what COM ports are even available. One way, if you don't want to mess with going to the device manager, is simply guess and check. Click each one until you see which one will show you the reporter feed. Now, if you've plugged in a USB adapter before you clicked the real time, you should be fine. But if for some reason it's not showing up here, I recommend closing the case, opening the case again, and then clicking real time. And Transcript Manager Pro will rescan your computer to determine which ones are available. I know, for instance, mine is COM6. You'll notice that usually Transcript Manager Pro will also pull up COM3, even though when you look in your device manager, there's nothing on COM3. Well, there really is. It's your dial up modem. We didn't want to weed this out in the rare event that somebody has set up a USB to serial adapter or a communication port under COM3, but you should probably never have to set it to COM3, but it will be in the list. And if you do set it to COM3 and try to connect to the court reporter, you'll notice nothing will come across. So just remember to ignore that COM3. It is your dial-up modem. The drop down below that is baud rate. This is something the court reporter sets in their software. You simply need to confirm that you're both set to the same baud rate. Now I would say 95 to 98 percent of the time court reporters will be sending a baud rate of 2400. But you can go in and change to all of the various baud rates. You must also note to the reporter they need to send a case view feed. This is the most universal feed, can be sent by any court reporter no matter what software they particularly use, and probably is the signal they are sending. But it's a good idea just to confirm that. Should never have to worry about the advanced settings. Once the name, the COM port, and the baud rate are set, all you have to do is click connect. That will then open up a transcript in your document window. Also add it to your case. You can see here this one is green so I know which one is connected and now I'm connected to the court reporter. There's no reporter connected to this one so I'll show you an example but that's how easy it is to connect to a court reporter. Once I'm finished I click disconnect and it just makes sure that I want to disconnect and I am disconnected from the court reporter. I want to show you real quickly how to reconnect. This is a very useful feature if you have to take your laptop with you on a break or on lunch and you want to append more of the transcript to the transcript you took in the morning session. Simply open up the transcript. You can see this one's already open. Go to Transcript, Reconnect Current Transcript. This will bring back 
my transcript options, you'll notice I cannot change the name because it's simply going to append it to the transcript I opened. But I can change the COM port and the baud rate. And this is just in case there's a new reporter or your COM port has changed. And then just click Connect again. And it will put the text right after the text that was currently there. And then I can disconnect. And you can do this numerous times. To show you what it will look like while connected to a reporter, I'm going to use our transcript example. Now we've placed this in the Help menu to avoid any confusion. So I go to Help, Run Transcript Example. And this will open up a recording of a court reporter. This is a great way to practice, see what it will look like, and also give demonstrations. The first difference you'll notice in our real time is that it starts at the bottom of your screen below the split pane. This is what we call the real time pane. You'll notice the functionality of this as we get further into the transcript, at which point I'll revisit this feature. The most common feature in real time would be the quick mark. This is when you click the space bar and it will highlight a particular line of the transcript. So I'm going to go ahead and click the space bar and you can see it highlights a particular line of the transcript. This is a great way to easily flag key portions of testimony. Now you'll notice as this real-time pane begins to fill up it goes up here into the transcript and scrolls along. I want to review something that happened five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, three hours ago. All I have to do is grab the scroll bar and scroll up to the portion of the transcript I'd like to review. Now you'll notice the real time continues to come into the real time pane without moving the transcript at the top. This is a great way to enable you to still create quick marks, still review what's happening in real time while reviewing previous portions of the testimony. For instance, if you're a judge, this is a great way to rule on objections without losing your place in the transcript. Once you're finished, the easiest way to get back for them to scroll and sync is to click the escape key. And now you'll notice they'll scroll in synchronization once again. I would say creating quick marks and scrolling is what 99% of our users do in real time. You can create highlights, you can create notes, all in real time, but remember you're also probably trying to conduct a deposition or a trial and you don't want to overwhelm yourself. If you are a co-counsel or you are not taking the deposition, I recommend exploring some of the issue coding, adding notes, running searches in real time. One final thing I'd like to show you is the quick find, something you probably will utilize in real time. If I go ahead and hit the quick find or quick search, I can now type in a word and it will locate it in the real time transcript. This is very handy if you're, locate, if you're trying to locate a portion of the transcript that was taken four hours ago and you may need to search through 70, 80, 90 pages. I'm going to go ahead and begin to type the word Apple. I know this is about Apple computers. And as I begin to type, it starts locating the word. Now I've found the word I was looking for, but not the occurrence of that word. So I can use the next button to jump around the transcript until I find the right occurrence of that word. And there it is. I can also go back to review previous occurrences. You'll notice it's also automatically paused the scrolling of the top window. Again, which I can start by clicking the escape key or hitting the snap button. Once you're finished with the search, you can turn off the quick find and go back to your real-time session.